One of the reasons why gaming PCs are so appealing to many people, me included, is the flexibility, the customization and expandability. However, while gaming PCs is such an amazing hobby with so many different PC parts to choose from, it can make it quite confusing. What components are actually required to get a PC build up and running and how much does a gaming PC actually cost? In today's video, I'm going to explain every PC component one by one, what each PC part do and what you need to think about when building your own gaming PC, hopefully making the whole process of putting together your next gaming PC a little bit easier. Let's dive into the video and let's start by covering the GPU. The graphics card or the GPU is by far the single most important component in a gaming PC and it is the component that does the major heavy lifting. The difference between an old and obsolete GPU versus the latest Gen 30 series GPU from Nvidia can mean the difference between a complete slideshow in your favorite game and a silky smooth gaming experience. The GPU basically does all the rendering and outputs it on the monitor. The graphics card dictates what frame rate or in-game smoothness you get based on the level of details and resolution you select. A budget-oriented GPU is often quite limited when it comes to resolution and graphics preset, while a more powerful graphics card gives you more flexibility because of the extra compute power. For example, a $330 GTX 1660 Super is able to run Call of Duty Warzone at 1080p maxed out at an average of 98 FPS, while a $499 RTX 3070 is able to run the game at 4K, and that is 1080p times 4, using the same settings at only 10 FPS lower. It is therefore important to figure out what you want out of your gaming PC first and then pick a graphics card after that. That is one of the reasons why I typically start with a monitor when someone asks what graphics card they should pick. For example, someone with a more standard like 1080p 60Hz monitor would be more than happy with a $220 GTX 1660, while someone with let's say a 1440p 160Hz display would probably look for something like a $479 6700XT or an RTX. 3070. Now these GPUs not only have much more compute power than the 1660, they also carry more VRAM or video memory, which basically allows you to run your favorite game at high resolution without lag or stutter. Picking up a GPU is easy, all you have to do is really to look up benchmarks for the games you like to play. Now when it comes to picking the actual GPU, right now there are two brands to choose from, Nvidia, AMD and soon Intel. Now what you often find is two brands on a graphics card and the reason for that is because neither AMD or Nvidia produce their graphics cards in higher volume, instead they simply make the graphics chip and then they ship it to various third party companies such as Gigabyte, Asus, MSI and Powercolor. They then figure out things like PCB, cooling solution, perhaps tweak things a bit and then they release it for you to buy. A more powerful GPU tends to have a beefier cooler, while a more budget friendly card tends to be relatively small. It basically all comes down to thermals and temperatures, where the GPU manufacturer simply works out a cooling solution to stay below certain temperatures to avoid something called thermal throttling, which causes the frame rate to essentially drop. Therefore, it is not only important to pick a power supply with enough power, sufficient cooling is also equally important. And the case or the chassis in which the GPU will house also needs to have adequate airflow for the GPU not to overheat. So to summarize the GPU, I would like to think of it being the main driver, the heavy lifter and the component that impacts the gaming experience the most. The CPU and the GPU installed into this board called a motherboard where the CPU fits into a socket and the GPU into one of these PCIe slots. Now as long as you avoid the most basic and cheapest motherboards on the market, the motherboard won't have any impact on the performance. 
Now let's say you have a high refresh rate 1080p monitor and aim to build a budget friendly system, typically a 6 core Ryzen 5 5600X or an Intel 12th Gen 12400 would be a great place to start. Now while 4 core CPUs are still being manufactured and still being recommended, I would typically avoid those as we are starting to see more games starting to benefit from 6 and 8 core CPUs. And that is typically the range I'd like to focus on as anything more than 8 cores hasn't shown to give any significant performance boost in game, at least not as of yet. Now, If you plan on playing a lot of intensive games, you will see the greatest benefit from an 8 core processor. Keep in mind that a lot of games nowadays can be pretty demanding and knowing that the GPU is doing most of the heavy lifting. It is typically wiser to spend more money on the GPU versus on the processor. Now to make things simple, I like to think of it like this. As long as you get a fairly new 6 core and 12 thread CPU, you're out for a good start and you don't have to worry that much about the CPU being a significant bottleneck. I have a couple of PC builds linked up down below with good CPU and GPU pairings with benchmarks so you get a good sense what you can expect. Now when it comes to cooling the processor, there are several ways to solve this. Now typically when picking up a cheaper CPU, you tend to also get a CPU cooler included. AMD offers a pretty good one, while Intel is unfortunately pretty disappointing. If your budget allows for it, a budget off the market cooler can be quite a nice solution here. And here we got two choices either an air cooler or a liquid cooler. Now all in ones or a liquid cooler are usually better options when building in a smaller case where air coolers won't be able to fit. Temperature wise both solutions are very good but IOs tend to be a bit more expensive starting at about 50 to 60 dollars or you can get an air cooler for as low as 30 dollars. Next up we got RAM. And nowadays we use DDR4 RAM sticks in the modern gaming PC, but DDR5 RAMs are starting to become the new standard. A budget friendly kit that offers great price to performance typically sits around $6 to $70. For that you're getting two 8GB sticks at a clock speed of 3200MHz CL16 which is considered to be a good performance sweet spot. A rule of thumb, aim for a dual 16GB 3200 to 3600MHz speed and you'll be more than fine. Now what we got left now is storage, power supply and case. Now while storage doesn't have a major impact on the gameplay per se, it can definitely still play a significant role in your overall gaming experience. Mechanical hard drives used to be the medium you would store your games on, however nowadays flash based storage have become the new standard as these offers much faster loading times. Now an M.2 typically sits around $60 to $100 and will give you enough space to fit quite a few games depending on which capacity you pick. I recommend going for at least 512GB for a budget gaming PC build and that will get you pretty far. Moving on to power supply, which uh, basically all it does is providing power to each PC component. Typically uh, these range between 550 to 1200 watts of power, however most people won't need anything more than 650 to about 700 watts. Now, while wattage is the main indicator you look at when putting together a gaming PC build, the first question you should be asking yourself is whether the power supply should be modular, which basically means that each cable is detachable from the unit. This makes the building process easier as you only need to attach the amount of cables you actually need. For example, if you only have one SSD device, you will only need one cable and you won't have to worry about trying to hide the extra cables keep your PC nice and tidy. Now this adds a few dollars to the price tag but it can be worth it considering especially when building in a smaller form factor. Which kind of begs the question, what is a form factor? So motherboard comes in several different sizes, for ATX, MATX and Mini ITX being the most popular ones. Which one you should get depends on what kind of PC you'd like to build. 
If you for example want to build a smaller PC, you will look for either M80X or Mini ETX. Typically, if you're aiming for a budget gaming PC build, M80X cases generally tends to be the form factor to go for, as these uses less materials and tend to be the least expensive. Even M80X motherboards tend to be a little bit cheaper in price. Now lastly, if you would like to spice up the look of your gaming PC build a bit, you can always add a few extra RGB fans or a couple of LED strips for a few extra dollars. Have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them down below. I have a couple of gaming PC builds linked up down below if you want to check them out. Thank you so much for watching this video, have an awesome day.